Hey guys, Timmy D with DroneMappingTools.com and in today's video we're going to show you how to do PPK processing on the Mavic 3E with just the topo processing software. So I did a video last week, it was much too long, so today's video is going to be very short to the point. When you are doing PPK processing on the DJI Mavic 3 Enterprise, the M300, the I assume the M30, um, I have not done any work with that, uh, for sure the Phantom 4 RTK, and even the Mavic 2 RTK, I believe, that's another one I've never done any work with, but all you need is the drone flight and a core station, and you can do PPK processing. It is not difficult whatsoever. Now, with the Mavic 3 Enterprise, one thing I want to point out, you must have the RTK module. So, say on the M300, it's it's just a RTK drone by default. So it is the everything is already integrated. But with the Mavic 3, you must purchase separately the $709 RTK module to put on there. Because what will happen is if you do not have the RTK module, the only file you will get in your images folder will be the, the mark file. So the navigation and observation and bin file, they will not be there and therefore you cannot do PPK processing on it. So just want to point that out. So the first thing we're going to do is we have the Topo Drone processing software open. Now there's some additional tabs right here, the LiDAR tabs. If you have the LiDAR modules, then you would see those. If you only purchase the RTK and PPK processing software, which has dropped. It used to be 500, and now it's only 300 US dollars. So a very, um, in my opinion, a very easy investment, um, easy, much easier to afford. And what it does for you is absolutely amazing. So the PPK tab is for people that have the Topo drone PPK kits that you added on to like your Phantom 4, the old Mavic 2. Um, so they had some kits and even the Altel drones have some PPK kits were added on those. The RTK tab is when you have a DJI RTK drone with the appropriate module if needed and also the Altel EVO RTK drone. So we're on this tab. I'm going to select the images folder. Go here mapping tutorial and I'm going to come to that folder okay I want that and it'll open it up it's going to tell you over here how many photos are uh, in the folder and there are 183 folders right and it also tells you that there's 183 events so that is very important because we want the number of events to match the number of photos they should always be the same and if they're not then I mean, we can still work around that, but ideally, they should always be identical. So one uh, word of caution, never delete any photos before you do your PPK processing. Leave all the original photos in the folder, and then you can delete extra or non-needed images later. Now, in the navigation file, there is a navigation file within the, the DJI image folder, but I prefer to use the navigation file from the base unit. Uh, in my opinion, you get better results. If people want to argue with that or have a different opinion, then by all means, feel free to paste that below. But I have seen better results using the base. Now we're going to go and import our observation file from the core station. So this is the closest cores. I'm going to bring that in. And so again, this, this right here is only using the drone flight and drone data, so your GNSS data from the drone and a core station. That is all that's absolutely necessary to do the PPK processing. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Start. And what it's going to do, it's going to read through. You'll look up here in this box, and when you see Q1 or Q, Q equals 1, Q equals 2, that is the... Um, the result, whether it's a, a fix or a float, and in most cases, you know, once you're up in the air, it's almost always going to be a, a fix 
throughout that. There could be certain areas that are afloat, but that will not affect your overall quality of results. And now it will go through, and you can see down here in this bottom corner, it is updating the images, and, and it's not updating the original images. It is actually making a copy of those images and writing those to a folder called output. And so your original images are not altered or edited in any way, which is important. You know, that way you can always go back and rerun the original images or do any comparison. But this will take a folder. So let's open that up and look at it. You see it created this folder called output. And within that, there's another folder called update tags. And this is the folder that will contain all of the images with the updated EXIF data written to them. Now you're able to take these images and import them into the photogrammetry software of your choice. I mean, that could be PIX4D, Agisoft, Terra, uh, Carlson, uh, Drone Deploy online. I mean, there's just, there's now a barrage of them. So you're not limited to a specific photogrammetry software. The images have been updated. You can pull them in and process them. Now, one thing I want to mention, this, this says WGS84, and that's what's selected. But this base, in fact, has NAD 83 2011 coordinates. And that, so the coordinates we're seeing right here, these are NAD 83 coordinates. And so your results are by default NAD 83 2011. Even though this says WGS84, they are NAD 83. We would have to use the ITRF 2014, in which they just now released um, the new ITRF. Um, and I don't know when they're going to start incorporating that into the, to the core stations. But for all practical purposes, that within one to two centimeters is WGS84. So you would have to alter these coordinates to the ITRF 2014 coordinates, then your results would in fact be, you know, within one to two centimeters WGS84. But I will just leave them with the default NAT83 coordinates and know that my results are now geographic NAT83. So when you pull it into your software, when you specify the CRS, you will tell it that it is NAT83 2011 geographic, and then you can always transform it back to WGS84 if desired in your software, or just in the output, go ahead and go with uh, NAT83 2011 state plane, UTM, you name it, you can do whatever you want. So that's it. I hope this was very helpful, and again, to purchase this, it's only $300. There's been a $200 price drop will go to solutions on the dronemappingtools.com website, drop down to PPK software, and then you will see the Topo Drone software there. $300, add it to cart, buy it, we'll get you the um, license, the perpetual license will be issued within 24 hours. You can actually download a 14 day full operational. Um, trial on this and so within the website there'll be I'm trying to see is there a link we'll have a link to download the trial so I mean you can go ahead and try it for 14 days if you know you want it then you can go ahead and purchase it use the trial and then within 24 hours we'll get you the perpetual license key and you are off and running I hope this has been beneficial thank you if it has been give me a thumbs up if you have comments put them in the comments below and I'll answer those any questions and uh, we'll see you in the next video.